right now we are going to be moving to our steam part. Now after the horse, and even when the horse was still here in a big way, steam engines came onto the prairies. That was the first mechanization that we saw in agriculture. We've got the down engine coming through right now. It was originally owned by the University of Manitoba College of Agriculture and used in training farmers and engineers on how to operate steam engines. Consequently, this one had very little use and it is near new condition. It's owned by the Down family of Manitoba and it has been a participant in 50 Manitoba Threshman's reunion. Usually has about three generations. I think it's just about got three generations there. What's the whistle sound like? You get the little guy to pull one of them. There we go. <laughs> yep, that is just about road gear right here as they come through, ladies and gentlemen. They don't go any faster than that. So when the lady of the house heard the whistle, she could start picking potatoes because by the time the potatoes were done, husband would be home from the quarter of a mile where she heard that whistle. We have got a JIK's 50 horsepower. This is the Fred Jones engine. This engine could be purchased brand new for $1,750. You get a 10% discount for cash. Mrs. Bernie donated this to the museum in 1968 in honor of her husband who owned it and Fred Jones, and it's called the Fred Jones 50. Fred Jones operated till he passed away in 2005, and his name is on it for the life of that engine. We go now to the Carruthers engine. Of course, Mr. Carruthers was the man that founded this museum and the Thresham's reunion. It's a 65 horsepower J.I. case built in 1914. So it's 104 years old. Used to pull the grader during the construction of Highway 10 through Riding Mountain National Park. And it shows evidence of that, the heavily worn gears, on, or I should say, ribs on the back wheels, as you can see that. Donated to the museum by Don Carruthers, one of the founders of the Manitoba Agriculture Museum, whose family farm the museum is situated situated on today. Let's hear the whistle on the Carruthers. I always love the whistles. Coming in right now, ladies and gentlemen, is the Howson engine. It's a 75 horsepower case, and you have to appreciate how many steam engines are in our steam parade. We've been watching steam engines for a while now. Sold to Harvey Murdoch in Franklin, Manitoba. It worked in Salisbury and McCreary. It also was part of a sawmill operation for a couple of years. Donated to the Manitoba Agriculture Museum by Robert Howson. It is our Howson engine. It's so nice to have it here. 75 horsepower case. The whistle sounds like... That's what you call a whistle. That's what you call a whistle. We've got another 75. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is the Twister. The reason it's called the Twister is this engine was most recently rebuilt and it went through the 2007 Eli Tornado, hence the name, the Twister. Let's hear what the whistle sounds like on the Twister. I like it. Big separator in behind and that was the unit that you see coming down the road to harvest your crop after the neighbor's crop was done. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the big 110, and in our slow race, we have a slow race every day following our tug-of-war. We're going to have a tug-of-war against one of these steam engines this afternoon. But following the tug-of-war, we have a slow race, slowest engine to stay moving to cross the line. Well, yesterday, unbelievably, the big 110 won the slow race, and I can't remember the last time the 110 won the slow race, but it was a great job of driving by our operators up there. It would pull 12 to 14 bottom plow all day, designated for heavy plowing and large scale uh, uh, threshing. Big part of that was the, the engine crankshaft. The 110, one of the largest, they did build a 150, but they don't have any 150s anymore. You bet, crank it up. He's got, <laughs> thanks for bringing it through. Let's hear the whistle on the big 110. Is it a big whistle? <laughs> fairly big, fairly big. Coming in right now, well, there's another winner of a slow race. That was on Wednesday, won the slow race. And this is the Robert Bell, 24 horsepower, built in 1926. Gerald Duke and Robert Bryce bring it through this afternoon. The, the, this engine came originally from Ontario back in 1973. It's a prime example of late Eastern Canadian threshing machines, or threshing's engines, a little shorter wheelbase, and side mountain narrower wheels. Let's hear the whistle on the Robert Bell. <laughs> Very distinctive. Thank you, Gerald, for coming through. 
Ladies and gentlemen, still steam engines are coming in front of our grandstand. A lot of museums are going to have steam engines, but they're not in running order. These are all government inspected. The boilers are government inspected on a regular basis, and each one of our operators is a ticketed steam operator. So we keep track of all those kind of things. Our Steam Operating Association, general information here, 150 years, the stationary steam engine has been invented and been around, and we've still got them running beautifully here. Agar Scott come in front of the grandstand, ladies and gentlemen. Another one of the rare steam engines, 25 horsepower. You can see a pretty fancy canopy on this one. It is 106 years old, built in 1912. Unlike the other engines we've watched here today, it's got a double cylinder engine. The size and style of the engine was very popular for sawmilling, as they felt that the twin engine gave a little steadier power, and when you're cutting, that is always an important part. The engine has sawn much lumber around the museum over the last 30 years, and I know that our car squad has got a whistle. There we go, clear the track we're coming through. Well, every year, ladies and gentlemen, there is a special award that goes to the best dressed team on the parade route. This year, we have a Gar Scott winning our best dressed team. And it's just coming in front of the grandstand right now. Ladies and gentlemen, how about a nice round of applause for our Gar Scott best team of the 2018 64th Annual Freshman Reunion. Let's hear the whistle on the award-winning steam engine for 2018. Very nice. Ladies and gentlemen, we just got one more steam engine to go. It's our Reeves, and this is the Emerson Birmingham and Reeves Works Company out of Columbus, Ohio that made it. 25 horsepower, 1917, so it's 101 years old, cross compound engine. You can see the smokestack is just a little bit different. We've got a heavier boiler. I'd like to hear the whistle on the 25 Reeves here this afternoon, our final steam engine of our steam parade. This engine has been frequently providing steam for our service mill over in the village. So make sure that you see how it works, get some of that steam corn part of the steam parade. Now Glenn is getting off our band here. He is our steam coordinator of the steam part of the parade. But thank you for that whistle. But he also takes names for the stooking competition. How many stookers do we have out there? Anybody ever stooked before? If you're stupid, put your hand in the air. We're going to be taking teams of two people. We need four of them. And Glenn is going to be taking names. There's cash awards, too, for winning and even placing in the stooking competition. We're going to go right now. We've got a beautiful little tractor, one of the early Gibsons. The Gibson H comes through right now. As it comes through, notice the color on it. That is the original color on it. We've got Stephen Ward at our controls there. The Hubert, one of our rare engines. These are kind of the orphan engines, as it is. And we've got Robert Weed with Norman Morton Manitoba brings that through this afternoon. The Eagle F model, 1222, Hubert Kavanaugh from LaSalle Manitoba brings it through. You notice the cross mount radiator. That radiator is put sideways on there. A lot of people think so because of the tremendous cross winds in Saskatchewan. We have the Nielsen coming through right now. Our little Nielsen slides through. It's got the great big rear traction Darlene Weave of Morton Manitoba. Darlene, thank you for bringing it through. Ladies and gentlemen, closest to our grandstand, just coming through now, these are these are the ones that there's not many of around. These are orphans made by major companies during a time when a lot of them went in and out of business. There's a real nice little unit right there. We've got the gray tractor. As the gray comes through, it's 1830. Main wheel drive could be filled up with water to get a little extra traction out of it. And Glenn Greenlay from Melinda brings it through this afternoon. Glenn, thank you for being part of our parade. The Happy Farmer, that is the orange tractor with a single front wheel up in front there. As our Happy Farmer comes through, Devin Hebert from Winkler, Manitoba breaks it through. You can turn that on a dime, that little tractor. The Happy Farmer, well, definitely a row crop model of the very, very early ones. That's 1916. That tractor right there is 102 years old. We've got our Avery. Very nice little Avery BF, 1945, the end of World War II. Alyssa Fleury brings that through this afternoon. Alyssa, thanks for being part of our parade. 
Now you can see how some of the early gas tractors look very, very much like steam engines. Coming through the 1912 case, 2040. Lynn Weave of North Manitoba. That's a big case there. We've got a 1919 case, 2040, owned by Norman Hunter. Murray Hunter is doing the driving this afternoon. Murray, thanks for bringing it through. If you look on Murray's case, there's actually a headlight up over the radiator on that one. That was one of the first headlights used on a tractor. 1915 case, it's another 2040 coming to us. The Down family's got it hooked up to the separator. Nice unit right there. The case separator and the case tractor coming through. Now we've been watching our vintage equipment at Pioneer Parade brought to us by CFRY here for above. Well, we're getting close to 45 minutes and we're just getting started. And remember, we've got our international parade with all of our regular parade here this afternoon. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to thank some of our sponsors, of course, CFRY for sponsoring our parade, Enns Brothers, John Deere dealership, CNC Rentals, Manitoba Liquor and Wateries, Q Country Radio, Hardy Enterprises, McGregor Anchor Sales, Stride Credit Union, Farmer and Brewers, Titan Truck Sales, 730 CKDM, and Manitoba Corroborator, just part of our sponsorship here at the Threshold's Reunion. Well, furthest away from the grandstand in 1913, Case 40. This was donated by Gordon Graham and Dave Turnbull brings it through this afternoon. We've got some nice little units and a couple of cute little guys on a Case C drill over there. They come through with Daniel Cozy. William and Alex, I believe, are on the controls there. They're looking after Dad, making sure that seat doesn't run out. It's a 1916 crate Case Crossmouth 1018, pulling the Case 20 row C drill. Nice little case comes through, it's a 1220, Nathan Greenlay, up on that cute little gray. The orange tractor closest to our grandstand is a VA case, and Melvin Hodgkins brings that through this afternoon. Melvin, thanks for being part of our parade. We go to case, and all these implements are part of the video series that's up at the uh, souvenir booth, along with horsepower. So it doesn't matter whether you like horses or any type of the implements, there's a special video on each one. 1966, 930 Comfort King. And Daryl Reimer all the way out from Vancouver driving our Comfort King here this afternoon. A little red tractor, the 1947 Empire tractor, that's actually built out of spare Willie's Jeeps parts. So it was kind of a built up tractor out of Willie's Jeeps, but it has got a, a really, really interesting history in it. Case, the 1200 Traction K. You can see the crab walk steering on it as it comes through right now. We'd like to thank our operator, Roy Woolsey, for bringing it through each and every day. This is day number three. Tomorrow afternoon will be our fourth and final day of the Freshman Reunion. Remember, every night is rodeo time. 7.30 at night, we've got the CCA and MRCA rodeos going, along with Canadian Thoroughbred Chariot Racing. That takes place each and every night. Another one of our rare tractors is the Alton Taylor. That is a 1915, 103 years old. Murray Johansson up our control. Looks like Logan, future operator, is up there too. Good job, Logan. You can see a little different front end on that. Looks like it should be making pellets. The early gas tractors, ladies and gentlemen, right there. Now, every night there has been a concert series going on. The concert series, we've got Five Acres Band is going to be playing at that at 7.30 tonight. They have movies for the kids available. For the ones that don't want to go to the rodeo, there is a movie available. We want to tell you about next year. Next year is going to be celebrating 65 years of the Threshman's Reunion. So if you have an antidote, you'd like to get in on that, make sure you put your name on the list of volunteers. Hundreds and hundreds of volunteers each and every year, and we can always use more. Always use more. Coming in right now, we're going to be moving into the Rumley's. Rumley Oil Pull. We've got a Rumley Oil Pull of 1912. It is a uh, oil pull E3060, developed between 30 and 60 horsepower. It's on loan from Joe Tucker, and Cody Isaac brings it through this afternoon. You notice one thing between the steam engines and the gas tractors, when the steamers came through, it was almost quiet unless there was the whistle being blown. Now with the gas tractors, noise came into the picture. Combustion engines, and that's what we deal with today. They've got to quiet it down again, but when they first came out, the combustion engine on these big rumblies was quite noisy. Dave Jordan comes through with the rumbly oil pull. It's a 1530 Type C. Jordan Brothers brings it through, and Dave Jordan is 
one that brought it there this afternoon, the Jordan outfit. They look very, very much like steam engines, except from a steam engine, you go to a gas power. And look at the top of that engine, it's just vibrating out there, and that Rumley oil pull. We've got a Rumley oil pull, this is Type F, 1530, and Garth Crooks from Ardmore, Manitoba, brings it through, and Jessica, I believe, is doing the driving this afternoon. Jessica, nice to have you part of our parade. Closest to our grandstand is the DJ. He's going to be DJing the music tomorrow night at the dance. That's Corey Christensen. And then there's a Rumley Oil Pole Type Z or Z. It depends on which side of the 49s are from. It's a 4060 pulling the case separator. Corey Christensen, nice to have you through our parade. He operates that little gas tractor in the threshing competition this afternoon. They had some problems yesterday, but they've got them rectified. And it's going to be a better day at the threshing competition today. Rumley of 1919, 1919, this is a G2040. Adam Christensen brings that through this afternoon. Closest to our grandstand, ladies and gentlemen, we have another Rumley oil bull as it slides through. They notice the canopies to get the sun or the rain off, as the case may be. Furthest away from the grandstand, a Rumley oil bull type 8, 1630, restored by Ken Turnbull. And uh, Gordon Giles brings that through this afternoon, grandson of the original owners. Jordan, nice to have you part of our parade. 1928, right next to the grandstands, another Rumley oil pull. It's a Type X, 2540. Jeremy Janowski brings that through. And Curtis Sims is back. That's the villain with the Cranbrook car. Well, he's back with his big unit here. The Rumley Oil Pull as it comes through, ladies and gentlemen, is pulling our Shepherd Combine, circa of 1930 to 35. Curtis Sims, I need a little canvas on there, Curtis, before you can go to the field. Okay, if Angie Klim is close by, we could use you on the stage, Angie Klim. We have a 1955 Alice Chalmers, as we move into Alice Chalmers, and, and it was Alice Chalmers continued to manufacture under Alice Chalmers. 1955, and Lexi Green at our controls. Hair to match. Here we go, 1950 Alice Chalmers, model WF. And we've got Gary Taylor out of controls. What a beautiful restoration job. I'll tell you what, a lot of vehicles don't have the shine you've got on that tractor. Good job, Gary. Here's a neat little four-wheel drive as it comes. We're going to get it to stop. If we can get you to stop right in front. Ladies and gentlemen, each and every year, there is a special award for best artifact. This is our best artifact, ladies and gentlemen, a Massey Harris general purpose. Kevin Maybon, I'd like a nice round of applause for Kevin. We have a special plaque. Roseanne Newfeld is going to make the presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, how about another nice round of applause? They work very, very hard on all this equipment to keep it running. This little artifact is having just a little bit of trouble with it, keeping it slow enough. It'd be easy if you came through in road gear, but when they idle them through, sometimes they have some problems. Congratulations, best artifact of the 2018 64th Annual Freshman's Reunion. We now move to closer to the grandstand. We've got the little red tractor. That's a Massey Harris as well. It's a 101 Junior Standard. And Rayleigh Christensen brings that through this afternoon. Thanks, Rayleigh, for being part of our parade. What a nice little unit here, and this is where I learned how to drive, right there. Standing up on a Massey Harris with Dad in behind if you needed a little help. And that's how you learn how to drive on the Canadian Prairies, at least quite a few years ago. Massey Harris of 1952 is a 44, and Daryl Martins brings that through. Nice little cultivator in behind. Looks like a grandson driving in front. Pete, thanks for bringing that through. We've got a Massey Ferguson. This is a beautiful tractor. You can see the evolution of the tractor right here as we go from some of our earlier models, some of our later models. Bruce Brown brings through a 1963 Massey Ferguson 97. How many people do we have here that have ever driven or have ever owned a John Deere tractor? How many John Deere folk are there? 
Well, we got lots of green and gold out there. This was the very first tractor built by the John Deere company. It's called the Waterloo Boy. We have two of them on site. We've got one of them in our frame this afternoon. Driven by Jim Redaway. It's a 1917 Model E Waterloo Boy. Absolutely tremendous to have two on site, both in running order. Nice little John Deere Paul and Sand. It's a 1937 John Deere AR. Dave Newfeld brings that through this afternoon. That's our John Deere line of green. This was the newest video on our offer at the souvenir booth. This is the newest, the long green line, John Deere, just completed by Sam Tronics. Make sure you look at those videos because there's one that's going to interest you. And if there's somebody that can't come to Austin, you can take Austin to them. 1951 John Deere AR. And we've got Amber bringing that through this afternoon. It looks like somebody fell asleep. Hard to believe you could fall asleep on a John Deere. <laughs> Nice little unit here, pulling the Eaton's Imperial Grain Wagon. This is a John Deere D, and the Down family brings it through this afternoon. Nice restoration job. You can see how the horse was put out of business. That is a horse reach or a horse pull right out front there where a team of horses would be hooked up. Well, you can drive, slide a pin in on a tractor and pull it right along. We have got Remy Cameronall of Paul and Manitoba, 1939, John Deere B with a mandrel saw at the front. He's getting ready to cut his winter supply of wood. Remy, nice to have you through. Patty, always nice to see you out there. Patty's been bringing this through all week long. In 1931, John Deere GP, General Purpose, built to compete against Farmall, one of the early row croppers right there. Close to our grandstand again, we've got an unstyled John Deere D on rubber. Alyssa Greenlay brings that through. Alyssa, thank you for bringing it through our parade this afternoon. 1948 John Deere comes through. It's another D. And we've got Greg McConnell at the controls. You can see the longevity. They were really solidly built tractors. They said sound, sounded like they were going to die, but they never did. Puck, puck, and away they go again. 1945, John Deere A comes through, and we've got Calvin Loomis at a control. Looks like Calvin's got some help there this afternoon. Nice little road cropper. Looks like very similar to some of the other uh, models and businesses that had tractors that were road croppers. John Deere had to compete, so they came out in models that were very, very similar. Market gardening and row crop here. We've got a John Deere 1945 row crop H, and this only got 14 horsepower. It was donated by August Ellison, and John Fleury brings it through this afternoon. Well, nice little canopy, and the sun is out. It is a warm afternoon. We've got one of our lady operators, and Michelle Bergson comes through this afternoon, and she's got the John Deere Model M with the little two bottom plowing behind. I'd like a round of applause for the lady volunteers and all the ladies that work so hard in all the farms across our Canadian West. Another John Deere M here, it's a two bottom plow, 1949, nice little canopy there as well. We've got the great big one way in behind our John Deere 70. That is actually a diesel, starts on gas, goes to diesel after that. And we've got Zip Bueller up at our controls, it's a 1955 John Deere 70. And I guess that's a gas one. A lot of the big diesels, they used to start them on gas, and then we had one that was a 70. John Deere had the hand clutch, so when you were a little guy, you could operate a John Deere because sometimes I couldn't push the clutch on the other tractor. 1949 John Deere R, Ryan Down brings that through this afternoon. Closest to our grandstand, we've got Corey Lee from and with Austin Lee up there. 1951 John Deere R, 65 horsepower. That was the biggest tractor in the line in the original condition. Here's a 70 on propane here. And our 70 on propane comes through this afternoon, another canopy. Ladies and gentlemen, as we round out our John Deere Expo here, we have a John Deere, that is the 3020, and Tiana Bodie brings it through. How about a nice round of applause for our John Deere volunteers and restorers and exporters here in our vintage equipment parade. Hard car, which turned into Oliver. We're going to start off with a hard car. We will go into some of our Oliver implements as we move along through our parade. You have to appreciate it takes a lot of work to keep them running. It takes a lot of work to get them running. And sometimes we have a little problem in the backstretch. We've got a nice little hard car coming through representing our